Why did you leave? Wait, which one? Why did you leave? The uh, the trick that took us in here on stage.
an OBGYN who's delivered over 4,000 babies.
October 1962 that uh, happened to involve the missiles in Cuba. That's when I was called out, but that was resolved rather soon. I was in during the period of time when Vietnam the War was going on. I did not have to go to Vietnam. But I was very much aware of uh, that war and probably helped influence me on some of my foreign policy uh, views. But my big concern is the cause of liberty and, and what is happening. I believe we're moving in the wrong direction, that we're approaching a time where we have very little liberty and we have too much tyranny, too much domination, too many rules, too many laws. We have a country that has 5% of all the people in the world. But for some reason or other, we have 25% of all the prisoners. And I don't believe the American people are that bad. I think we have way too many laws.
fisherman comes along and runs into a bird that didn't want to go look at the worms and, and makes a deal with the, uh, with the uh, fisherman. He says, uh, I'd like to have one of the worms. And the, uh, and the fisherman says, sure, I'll give you a worm, give me a feather. And that made both of them happy. The next day, the same thing happened. Each day, the bird lost a feather. Before they knew, before the bird knew about it, he couldn't, he couldn't hunt anymore. He couldn't go out and get worms himself. So he was really desperate to get his worms from the, from the fisherman. So the fisherman comes in, and, and on the last day that uh, this was going on, he said, well, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to have another worm, but I don't have any more feathers. So the fisherman said, fine and dandy. So now that the chicken had been plucked, the chicken was fat and lazy, couldn't defend itself. The fisherman picked up the bird and cooked the bird, and that was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> what we have to do is realize that if we're fat and lazy and think government's going to take care of ourselves, it doesn't work. As a matter of fact, what generally happens is we don't get too fat and lazy. Eventually, people get starved from their liberties and starved in the sense that productivity goes down. That's what's happening to our society today. Productivity is down. And what are we giving the young people in this country? Are we giving them a good job in order to pay off this massive debt, this student debt? No. What we give them is they end up with a lot of debt. What this country and our monetary system is all based on debt. Debt, we're in a worldwide debt crisis. It's the biggest in the history of the world. And we orchestrated this through the dollar reserve standard. And it won't last. It's coming to an end. And we have to realize this, that we cannot continue to do this. This is the reason that I make a suggestion that if and when elected president,
know, once again, for sure, respect for that particular clause, but for the whole Constitution as well. You know, during that period of time when I was in the Air Force in the 1960s, we were there essentially 10 years. The French were in Vietnam for 10 years. We in Vietnamese uh, died. 60,000 Americans died. And it was always said, I remember it so clearly, we have to be there or there will be a domino effect and communism would spread throughout the Far East. <laughs> well, we didn't win. We left. And uh, now what do we have? Uh, we have China as our banker. Uh, <laughs> which really tells you something about our flawed policies. And also, Vietnam is a trading partner. We trade with them. And we travel back and forth. We invest over there. Just think of what has happened in a peacetime, which couldn't happen in a war time, and we were, we were told we had to go to war to transform the world. There's no valid, there's no valid, stuff. you know, that's not a valid argument. This is why we're in the Middle East. We're supposed to be there to make the, what Woodrow Wilson called, make the world safe for democracy. Spread American goodness, teach them our ways. But you know what? We do have a lot of exceptional qualities. But you cancel them all out and you think you can spread them by force and by war. And you can't do that. Woo! My very strong suggestion is that we look to ourselves and prove ourselves, improve our economy, believe in property rights, believe in sound money, believe in the rule of law. And believe in minding our own business when it comes to international trade. a prosperous nation, and then just maybe others would want to emulate us and follow us. I think that would be a much better way of spreading our goodness than the use of our weapons and our military.
privacy and essentially eliminating so much of our privacy, but it has continued, that process has continued since then. But even in the, in the executive branch uh, right now, we have, we have gone way, way too far as far as protecting uh, our civil liberties and the protection of the rights of all Americans. But to pick out one guy and pretend that you know absolutely that he's guilty of a vicious crime, that therefore we have to, uh, you know, uh, prosecute him. And the president and now claims he has the right to be the prosecutor, the judge, and the jury. And he says, however, that he's going to assassinate American citizens. That should not stand. It hasn't been 
necessarily been used to take over the entire economy. But uh, this last uh, month, this last month, instead of the Congress renewing it, the President did it with an executive order. And it wasn't, it wasn't just renewing it, what he did was he changed a few things. Instead of emergency powers during wartime, he changed it to emergency powers anytime, even in these times. using weaponry and using 
So it just doesn't add up. And just remember, the Soviets collapsed not because we had to fight them. They collapsed because they overextended themselves. So our greatest danger is here at home. Nobody's going to invade this country. That's one thing that we know.
liberty, not cheering and not putting out our And this is why the class has been undermined. 
degree, and the wealth is transferred from the middle class to the wealthy. And here we have it. We have, you know, from left, right, and center are recognizing this, and not everybody understands exactly why, that there is a 99 one. But who got the bailouts? The wealthy got the bailouts. They were supposed to be providing houses for the poor. They got the bailouts, and they were gambling with derivatives, and who, got, who lost the jobs? The middle class, and they lost their home. So we, we aren't told the truth too often. Uh, and we have to look at the numbers on employment figures are fudged, the, uh, the inflation figures are fudged, the recent go to war. So when they beat the war drugs, which they're beating all the time, make sure, you ask the question, make sure you ask the congressman, are you sure, are you sure, before you go on public. And don't let the presidents go to war without coming to the congressman. Don't let them say, well, I got my permission from the United Nations. That has to stop.